Sports. The Locos have the best record in the Great Lakes League and entering tonight have a four game lead in the North Division. Last night they defeated the Xenia Scouts, the South Division number one, holding them scoreless en route to a 3 0 victory. Tonight, division leaders meet again in Lima. Locos looking for a sweep. Bottom of the fifth, Scouts up 1 0. David Shabu lays down the bunt with a runner on third. The pitcher grabs it but falls. The throw to first is just a bit outside. Jim Burengrad, Ross Adolph comes in safely. Locos tie the game at one apiece. Two batters later, Jeremy Johnson sends a liner into center field. Shabu trots on in. Locos take the lead 2-1 to the top of the sixth. OG grad Brad Corey on the mound using hypnosis to get these batters staring. He tallies three Ks through his six innings pitched. Bottom of the frame, it's eight off striking again. Right down the middle it goes. Shabu makes it 3-1. And then things got a little hairy. Austin Cox called in with the bases loaded. He gets a huge strikeout for the second out and a fly out with the, with the bases juiced. Locos win. 3 to 1. Second place teams collide in Salina. Grand Lake is second in the north. Their opponent from Hamilton begins the night a half game off the south lead. Mariners trail 3-0 in the fourth, but load the bases and get on board when Nick Zaurus scores on the wild pitch. It's a 3-1 game. Later, same at bat, Tyler Webster with a chopper into left, scoring both Derek Perola and Michael Brown. Grand Lake pulls even at 3 all and they go ahead and make it a big inning. Two batters later, Matthew Burler doubles to left, driving in Webster and Thomas Lindman. A five-run fourth inning gives the M's a 5-3 lead. Burler also provides the walk-off home run in this one. Mariners win 7-6. The Indians have owned their division rivals their past 11 games. The Tigers just looking for one against the Tribe. Indians up early 2-0 then in the top of the fourth. Cameron Mabin cracks a two-run shot right along the left field line to even the score at twos. Slight controversy as the ball seems to have bounced off the foul pole but still deemed a home run. To the top of the fifth, Miguel Cabrera facing a full count with two outs lines a deep single off the right center field wall, driving in two more runs for the Tigers. Detroit ahead 5-2, and then two batters later, runners on the corners, and Nick Castiano smacks a three-run shot to center field. That's his 16th on the season. Tigers finally beat the Indians with a final score of 12-2. In the Windy City, series tied at once between the Reds and Cubs. Top of the first, Zach Cozart wasting no time. Taking the 10th pitch of the game on a ride, his 14th of the year puts the Reds in front 1-0. Cubs answer back going up 3-1 but in the seventh, Tucker Barnhart gets the lead back. A deep shot to center field will bring in Brandon Phillips and Jose Pereza. Reds back out in front 4-3. to three. They add some insurance in the next inning. Reds take the series, winning 5-3. to three. Also in major leagues, Fort Loramie's Jared Hoing today is called back up to the Rangers from AAA Round Rock. Hoing had a RBI single in the seventh inning tonight in an 11-6 loss to the Red Sox, but the former Redskin went two for two and also scored a run in his return to the bigs. The Dwayne Wade sweepstakes ends tonight with the 13 veteran choosing his hometown Chicago Bulls. LeBron James' buddy had also reportedly talked to the Cavs, Nuggets, Bucks, and of course the Heat. The move leaves Chicago trying to shed contract with multiple reports tonight that they'll attempt to trade Mike Dunleavy to Cleveland. The Cavs do get Richard Jefferson back, though. Jefferson announced his retirement following the championship win, but tonight says on Snapchat that he's instead signing for two more years. We need to take a break here on Your News Now Sports, but when we come back, more from the hardcore as this Lima senior grad prepares to begin his professional career. Stick around. Welcome back. Lima senior grad Tyler White is finishing up his final college class this week. And then, like most recent grads, will have to work a real job. But for White, his office will be a basketball court in the Eurasian Republic of Georgia. Our Jason Geyser caught up with White today as he prepares to begin his career in pro hoops. Ever since he was a kid, Tyler White has dreamed of playing professional basketball. That's always been my goal. Travis Wall, he's always told me since he's been working me out when I was in high school that I definitely had the potential to play basketball. He said no, there was no doubt in his mind that I would play. When I got to college, it stayed the same goal regardless of how my season went. And I feel like this last season solidified the fact that I could play overseas. White led Northern Kentucky in minutes this year, finishing second in points, steals, assists, and both three-pointers and field goals made. From there, it's a leap of faith, leading to the Lima senior grad signing with BC Cactus, a new team in the Georgian Super League in the capital of Tbilisi. This team is actually new to the league. My coach tells me it's a great opportunity. The um, coaching staff is great to have me. They watch some of my film. The league is like kind of fast-paced, up-and-down basketball, basically my kind of style of play. And um, after this year, hopefully my numbers will be, will be pretty good stats-wise, and I'll be able to move on and play somewhere in um, Italy or maybe Greece. 
Standing six foot three, White knows that he'll best fit at the pro level as a point guard, a transition he started making during his senior season at college. This past year, my coach let me run the one a lot because he felt like with my skill set, it would be a great threat for our team. So, I mean, this year, I feel like I'll be able to transfer that over to the uh, professional game. He'll continue to work out both in Lima and at NKU for the summer before leaving for Tbilisi and a new career in a new land come September. Yeah, I'm definitely nervous, but I mean, this is something I've always wanted to do, so I'm just going to embrace the opportunity and run with it. In Lima, Jason Geyser, Your News Now Sports. University of Finley grad Justin Welsh finished 16th in the hammer throw tonight at the U.S. Olympic track and field trials. The top nine advanced to the finals. The former Oilers' first throw was his best at 215 feet 10 inches. Another UF product, Raven Clay, will run the 100-meter hurdles in Oregon tomorrow. College football is right around the corner, and some of the preseason watch lists are ready to go. The John Mackey Award given to the most outstanding collegiate tight end has a Minster grad on the list. Ethan Wolf had a reception in his first 11 games and tied for fourth on the team with 23 catches. Also, Ohio State's Pat Elfline is on the Remington watch list, honoring the top center. The two-time all-conference guard is moving to the middle this fall. And on the grass courts in England, seven-time Wimbledon champ Roger Federer found himself a place where he has been before. Down two sets in the quarterfinals to Marin Silic. Federer rallied back to win his third set right here. And then the Swiss Maestro orchestrated another comeback, finishing the fifth set, fifth set excuse me, with an ace. Federer now has nine comebacks from two sets down in Grand Slams. All right, thanks, John. We'll be back with Stocks.